of the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Again, it's my joy to be here. Let me just pass a few comments before we sit. First, your pastor is an amazing dancer. I was, I was, whisp I was whispering to him. I said, "Wow, pastor, this this dance is not, uh, this is not freelance. This is training." <laughs> Amen. Celebrate your pastor and his dear wife. God justly looking. Hallelujah. I sincerely want to honor the leadership, the entire leadership of this church. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be a blessing in the name of Jesus, the Christ of God. And then this is also a dancing church. I can understand where the anointing came from. I mean, those guys were, if you jump like that for 10 minutes, uh, I think you need a bottle of water. But they were jumping and then rejoicing. Let's celebrate what God is doing in this church. Amen. And like, like your pastor shared, it will only be for you from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands in one minute and just ask the Lord to speak. Speak to me, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Speak to me. Even by your spirit, we have a brief session of the word. But that it will come with the power to transform. And it will come with the grace to effect changes in our lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Help us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Let me lend my voice with that of your, your pastor to encourage you. I don't know how the system works here, but I want to encourage you, please, get to the book stand or the media stand and ensure that you invest in the materials for this conference make it a point of duty the bible says to buy the truth and sell it not faith comes by hearing and then hearing again the truths that you have heard i believe all through this conference sustain the power to change and to transform if i'd heard to there's a popular saying that one word from god can change your life that is true but the word itself does not change your life on its own it only changes your life when it is understood when it is received and when it is diligently engaged there is no record in scripture that satan is afraid of the word no in fact in the parable of the sower the bible says the word is the seed and when they planted it it was satan himself that came to remove it and yet it did not have an effect on him satan is afraid of what the word does in the life of a believer are we together remember his office in heaven was the light bearer himself the word without being engaged will look dead it is the faith of the believer that activates that power that is resident within scripture so that the word of god does not become without effect in our lives it's important for us to engage with understanding hallelujah i prayerfully thought about what i would share this morning and you would have noticed by now that i'm passionate about helping believers understand the ways of the kingdom i believe that this is where the victory of the believer lies when we understand the ways of god we understand the principles that connect believers to their inheritance in christ Apostle Paul speaking to the church in Ephesus said 
that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings that reside in heavenly places in Christ. But we do not need those blessings residing in the heavenlies. We need those blessings manifest here and now. And the word became flesh, the Bible says, and we beheld his glory, even as of the begotten of the Father. So um, I'll be sharing very briefly on having examined how to come out of trouble. Please get the teaching. Hallelujah. Deliver us from evil. We examine the, the mystery that brings the saints out of any predicament to a place of glory. When the Lord himself delivers the just from evil, he also preserves them. So it is not only important to learn about deliverance, you must learn the system of preservation in this kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Deliverance means that something went wrong already and it's a corrective measure to bring you back to God's position. But then we must learn to be preserved. God is not only a deliverer, he is a preserver. I'll be teaching this morning very briefly on the mystery of divine intervention. God is able to intervene in the life of people and not even allow the catastrophe start in the first place. Intervention means you step in and stop what should have happened to not happen. This is very powerful. It is not every time that God brings us out of trouble. There are times he does not even let us get there. And all these dimensions must be captured in our experience in God. Because there are times where the challenges that we face can so overwhelm us, we may not even have the strength to call upon his attention. Are we together? Intervention. Daniel chapter 3. Let's start reading from verse 23. Daniel chapter 3. It is true that God restores. God restores dry bones. The bones in Ezekiel's vision were once an army, but something happened and they began to deteriorate until they died. The longevity of their death caused the bones to so disintegrate. By the time the prophet would be speaking, the bones had scattered all around. But this is a mystery by the grace of God that God will show us that can help men to be on hot in the midst of circumstances. This is not, when you understand this mystery, it will not even get to a point where you will require restoration. There is a way that God's hand can come on time. There is a mystery you can engage that quarter to shame, His Majesty will arise to ensure that your eyes does not see shame. Are we blessed? Daniel 3, 23. We start our reading from verse 23. And these three men, this was the experience of the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Bible says they fell down into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Next verse, we are reading to 30. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? He says they answered and said, O king, true, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men lose. My goodness. Four men lose. Walking in the midst of the fire and they have no heart someone receive that word for yourself and they have no heart god is a healer but he's also the one who can stop you from being hot and the form of the fourth is like the son of god 27 26 then nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth in the midst of the fire. Three more verses. 
and the princes governors captains kings counselors being gathered together saw this man hallelujah upon whose bodies upon whose finances upon whose destinies the fire had no power turn that into prayer in one minute father there is what you can do to my destiny that the fire can have no power is someone praying please keep that scripture there that they all saw these men so they are a kind of men whose bodies the fire had no power lift your voice and pray make me that kind of man in the name of jesus that the fire that is humbling the nations will have no power upon me men whose bodies the fire had no power men whose bodies the fire had no power hallelujah let's continue our reading let's read together nor was an hair of their head singed neither were their coats changed nor the smell of fire passed on them now what the bible says these men so it is not a possibility with every man there are a kind of men that whatever it is that they have done with god the effect is that the fire has no power over them that they do not even smell like what they went through and that the bible says that these men even their coats does not need to be changed i just trust that this is what we'll wrap up this conference with yes that having been wounded and battered the healing and restoring power of god comes to lift you but now that you are lifted he will show you a principle where you will never have to go back to that state again rather you will be the deliverer who will go and pick people and this how come you are not touched and he says i come to i came to a life and i was shown a mystery that there are times that the fire can burn you and god can come as a healer as rafa but now i've been shown a higher dimension of intelligence where the fire has no power now if you don't believe what i'm saying you will think certain people are lying can i tell you the truth in all honesty and in all fairness there are people who have mastered certain keys in this kingdom they live as if the devil does not exist there are others who live victorious but there are others who live as if battles don't exist this is a strange mystery remember the bible paul speaking said there are different kinds of bodies that some are celestial and some are terrestrial he said even among the stars one differed from another in glory there is the excellency of the workings of the spirit that can happen in the life of a believer it will compel all and sundry to say there is a dimension of god at work in your life this is what god wants to do in our lives that not only will people celebrate your victory or your restoration from a life of defeat that something will happen to you that will say are you a nigerian is, is something really happening amen let's read that scripture again we're reading down to 30 please give it to us media 3 and verse 28 now then nebuchadnezzar speak look at the effect of this mystery on them he said blessed be the god of shadrach meshach and abednego who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trust him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god as a result therefore i make a decree that every people nation language which speak anything amiss against the god of shadrach meshach and abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other god that can deliver after this manner so there are many ways god delivers but this fashion is the type that touched the king even to make a decree the last verse the Bible says in verse 30, Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Dominion in this kingdom is predicated upon 
our understanding the systems of the kingdom i began to observe at the beginning of our teaching in this conference that the bible is a compendium of the multifaceted dimensions of god as revealed to the saints and the character of god is that he captures his dimensions in names so the bible is full of names names given to god as an attestation of his workings in specific dimensions when they saw him as a healer they captured it in a mystery called rafa when they saw him as provider they captured it in a mystery called gyra yeah and when they saw him as the righteousness they captured him in a mystery called sikenu out together now so all the names of god are a revelation of the dimensions of him and it is important that the saints know how to access these possibilities i did observe that there is nobody's destiny that is is an advantage by default no the very nature of man and the very sin nature has put us in a position of disadvantage but we take advantage of the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit to begin to redefine our possibilities in this kingdom and there are people whose rate of transformation is so slow they do not reflect much of the glory of god but there are others who because of their passionate search and desperation contend for dimensions of superior transformation that their lives they literally become like gods upon the earth men who the fire had no power over their bodies hallelujah there are keys that make for divine intervention there are keys that make for this mysterious spiritual preservation in the life of the saints it was the psalmist himself reiterating on this possibility that said yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death he said i shall fear no evil why for thou art with me he said thy rod and thy staff they comfort me that you can prepare a table for me in the midst so i don't need my enemies to necessarily go away for me to rise my driving them is not as a result of fear is that i do not want any other object to interrupt my worship of the king but whether they are there or not it should have no effect on my rising that a table can be prepared for me in the midst of my enemies hallelujah but jesus said i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven we reign in this kingdom by light please never forget this we reign in this kingdom by light it is the light that comes the illumination that comes from the word of god that empowers us to walk in victory darkness is a disadvantage to the believer lack of light will make the realities that are captured in this faith life to look like a lie you have to understand this so two people can go through the same situation and quite honestly one will not even know that he's in a situation like that while the other one all born again all lovers of jesus the difference is their comprehension of the ways of god hallelujah so we must cry for illumination i'm going to share with you three keys that provoke the hand of god to intervene in the lives of men to see that you never suffer shame in your christian experience you will live mysteriously powerful when you walk with these principles hallelujah can we pray in one minute again and ask the lord to open our eyes father i am willing to see and i'm ready to see please open my eyes in the name of jesus christ we're about to pray lift your voice open my eyes i need to see i need to see i need to see i need to see for the sake of my destiny i am tired of shame and reproach lord open my eyes i have seen you as a restorer but become a preserver in my life 
Let hope, let it rise Darkness trembles in your holy Let hope rise Darkness trembles in your holy light Hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord The first biblical key That ensures a life of intervention and preservation In a believer Is the power of consistent prayer not prayer consistent prayer consistent prayer that when a believer's prayer life becomes consistent effectual not just at the point of evil but it becomes a covenant that your prayer life and the fire upon your prayer life never goes down. It's one of the mysteries that can stop men from experiencing shame. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, the Bible declares Jesus' teaching said, He spake a parable to the end that men, so if you are not a man, you are exempted from this, but provided you are a man, wearing a body he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray the key word there is always everybody say always always does not mean all day it means consistently according to the economy of god in his dealings with men he does not assume that men need help just because they are in the presence of predicaments you have to understand this as powerful as God is, he has so limited himself to respect the will of man. There are seven fundamental things gave God gave man at creation. One of it is the will. The will of man is one of the factors, not the born again man, man as an entity. It makes him the zenith of God's creation. And from the time God gave man a will, it became scripturally incorrect for God to veto the will of man. Even at the expense of the eternal salvation of men, he still allows us to choose. At the expense of man's eternal salvation, eternal damnation, I meant to say. There are people today in hell, and yet the Father, with his all-seeing eyes, he watched them live their life on earth and went to hell. The will of man is a very powerful concept. And because of that, listen to me, God bounded himself with a principle that until men call upon him as proof that they need his help, he may be touched, but he is not moved. Being touched means he's compassionate. Being moved means faith has beckoned on him. Are we together now? So many people wonder and pray and say, Lord, why don't you come? Is it that you cannot see? That's not the way it works in the kingdom. The Lord is nigh them that call upon him. Not nigh them that desire him to come. Nigh them that call upon him. He said, call upon me and I will answer Psalm 133. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Everybody say consistent prayer. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. The challenge with believers is that for some reason we have engineered ourselves into engaging prayer only at the instance of trouble that we can see. The moment trouble comes and it becomes imminent that we are in defeat, then we now begin to pray. We, we come up with all sorts of fasting programs and prayer programs, but the prayer ministry is the ministry of priesthood. It's part and parcel of the spiritual growth process of a believer. Please understand this. It is not something that should happen only at the face of chaos. No. There are many believers who will tell you, I'm tired, I'm busy, 
but you hear that someone dropped dead or is in coma and suddenly you find out that they have all the time that means they always had the time you only have time for what you are passionate about hallelujah an attack on your prayer life is a real attack he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint in acts chapter 12 when we read from verse 5 to 11 this was the story of um apostle peter when he was caught in prison please give us from verse 5 the bible says that now peter was kept in prison but prayer was made how long please help me peter was kept in prison but prayer was made without season prayer was not just made without season because peter was caught it was the culture of the early church to always be in prayer prayer was made without season of the church unto god for him verse 6 and when herod would have brought him forth the same night are you seeing now i told you that the, the the intervention means that the trouble is never allowed to manifest the next day he was to be beheaded and the bible says that same night while peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door of the prison seven it says and behold the angel of the lord came upon him and a light shined in prison and he smote peter on the right side and raised him up saying arise up quickly and his chains fell from his hand notice every time he shows up like this chains fall the same thing happened with shadrach meshach and abednego and the angel said unto him guard thyself and bind on thy sandals so he did and he said unto him cast thy garment about thee and he followed me verse 9 and he went out and followed him and wished not that it was true what was done by the angel but thought he was in a vision verse 10 it says and they were past the first and the second word and they came to the iron gates that leaded unto the city which opened to them of his own accord and they went out and passed through one street and forth with the angel departed from him massive intervention on the strength of prayer you do not know how cheap satan is until you master the art of consistent prayer consistent prayer because you see in the realm of the spirit the bible lets us know that the prayer of the saints are held in vials according to revelations that when the there is like a prayer bank in the realm of the spirit that is able to go into the future of the saints prayer in vials lifted before the lord and stored for the times when they will be needed in the life of believers many believers do not pray i submit to you they pray when they come to church and they are led by a man of god to pray they have left the prayer ministry for men of god and the moment you seem to be a bit serious with your prayer life society makes you feel guilty say are you a pastor where are you going with this thing it's a very dangerous deception by hell especially at the times that we live now he spake a parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint when jesus was god he never prayed but when jesus became a man he prayed all through because all men pray to survive they don't just pray to be victorious are we together you can only fight the attacks you know and you have seen and you have perceived but there is more just like the man of god shared when he was on stage here let me tell you something if an average believer understands the schemings of hell per 24 hours over your destiny you will never never miss prayer again it is the one that manifests that you see that you know do you know i i read the book i read the book of job and the bible says job offered sacrifices for his children but we do not see job consistently as a man of prayer i saw sacrifice but i did not see prayer i guarantee you 
if job was a man of prayer the tragedy that happened would not be allowed to happen if the devil wants to attack you the system is first he brings through pride and carelessness and complacency and an arrival mentality he will allow your prayer life to go down he will allow it to go so down and then one day to be like a dream he will strike you in a way and a manner that will surprise you hallelujah consistent prayer in acts chapter 16 just write it we may not read it when you read from verse 25 to 34 the bible talks about paul and silas who were bound in jail and every time they caught the believers and put them to jail the goal was to eventually kill them not just to store them there and the bible says at midnight that paul and silas prayed and then they sang praises unto god it was so loud the prisoners heard them and then when you read the other verses they would tell you that suddenly there was a sound that god came the prison the bands broke and the jailer was about to kill himself and he said no don't do this we are on hot because they prayed and they praised you must obtain grace from god families must come up with an intentional prayer program let me tell you this if you are not systemic about your prayer life you will never be consistent prayer has nothing to do with emotions you must come up with a systemic approach to prayer maybe for someone this may be a solution you've been praying and saying lord why am i up today and down tomorrow you must come up with a systemic prayer I personally recommend taking advantage of mornings and nights because for most people we are workers and the, the time we can still out to really focus and concentrate is the mornings and the nights. It doesn't mean you cannot pray uh, any part of the day, but I'm telling you the mornings and the nights. There are few times where we see Jesus praying even in the afternoon. His times were before the day broke. You invest time in prayer. Are we together? James chapter 5 and verse 13. Apostle James said, Is anyone afflicted? James chapter 5 and verse 13. Is anyone among you afflicted? The biblical recommendation is let him pray not let him go around discussing with people not let him go around attracting sympathy let him pray by the grace of god i tell you with all humility i am a product of prayer i know what prayer does to the gates of darkness when the saints are serious about it show me what is refusing to walk show me the door that is refusing to open i like you to stay and pray and you watch the wonder working power of prayer It was Bishop Oedebo that said, no matter how mad a man is, he will not enter fire by mistake. He can hold your trouser and people say, yeah, he's mad, just forgive him. But he will never enter fire and say, I am mad. Do you know the Bible says when a spirit leaves a man, that that spirit goes through desert places. Nobody is there to cast that spirit out of the desert. And yet the spirit leaves the desert and, and prefers the body of that man than the desert. And I, I, I studied it and I said, why do they hate deserts? I found out is the heat. Desert is a hot place. And the fire that burns there will make the demons prefer a cold human body than a desert without anybody to cast him. So when your life becomes like that desert, the spirits by themselves will be compelled to relocate. There is, there is an extent of fire, a requisite level of fire that when a believer carries, I tell you, they project an arrow without your knowing. That arrow will re is a spiritual circumference. When it enters that zone, it, it, re it doesn't just return back to sender. It returns with a message written on it. You will not have the luxury to react to every satanic assault so you fortify yourself a system of auto reaction by an investment in prayer 
to the point that even when you are sleeping your spirit is praying if you are not a person of prayer you will not understand what i'm saying there is a way you can pray you sleep and you just want to stretch that stretch of two minutes will become a disaster to hell oh people pray 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 i beckon on you in the name of jesus that every spirit that is eating your prayer life is eating your destiny it takes more than intellect to arrive it takes more than intellect to be exempted there are arrows that fly by day there are noisome pestilences there are destructions that wait in noonday we move swimming in an ocean of evil it takes prayer to keep exempting yourself every time you pray you leave a prophecy in the spirit i am exempted my children are exempted all that concerns me are exempted there are spirits that are sent on an errand that even them they know that errand will not happen because they wonder why they were sent to certain people that you can carry a dimension of prayer fire it, it's not for preaching you no know? i'm not talking of prayer to prepare sermons he maketh his angels wind and his ministers flames of fire you get up your walking round masida bakata many years of the investments of prayer in in a shrine they are conjuring things and they bring your picture they say for this man and for his family and while they are praying suddenly like a mighty rushing wind they hear a sound from the spirit you are registering your presence in the realm of the spirit exempted from evil exempted from catastrophe let me tell you this there are many times sometimes i'm about to travel i live quite a busy schedule and when i want to travel people i know who are genuine men and women and prophets of god they can send me a text and say apostle are you about to travel i say yes he say please don't travel i just saw a revelation i saw a ghastly motor accident and i saw you in it i say you are right except that you hold on receive a report from the spirit that was sent dominion is the ability to veto the workings of darkness if i if i if i fear death i will not bless the body of christ again because the devil does not have a special day to want to kill me every day is a day that is a project when you see men survive this is is not because the devil is not aware of their existence they have mastered the art of paralyzing him he told job he said have you not built a hedge around him as you are listening to this there is an impartation of the grace of prayer for some of you god is telling you this is why evil is prevailing in your family there is no one there to stand and administer priesthood I'm not just talking of five minutes devotional thank god for that i'm not talking of just family prayer that ends up in quarrel i'm talking of a dedicated time of prayer not praying and you are browsing no i vow that you will not be promoted in this office don't argue with the man leave him and his folly go back to your secret place listen the ministry of angels are real but many of us have never experienced it read your bible angels walk with prayer anywhere you see the angelic the prayer ministry activated them you are not a person of prayer you will know nothing about angels i hope you're getting blessed please do not sit down and fold your arms and allow evil to come and crush you the arsenals of hell are rising like never before i 
all of a sudden it looks like you are having dreams you don't understand you're having visions you don't understand the issue is not just to wait until the day you have an opportunity for counseling and as you begin to pray you are investing time in prayer show me a weak believer who looks like he's a victim of the vicissitudes of life introduce him to the priesthood of prayer i show you a sign and a wonder whilst you're seated in one minute can you just blast in tongues for one minute as a sign and a token to your destiny that i am still coming men who fire had no power over them please take seriously what i'm saying Men ought always to pray. Men ought always to pray. Zikesh Kalari Sahasanda Bragadasia Katabratis. Shiperaketos Yata. You mentioned the name of your children. You mentioned your office. You mentioned your business. You mentioned your family. Forcefully advancing by the spirit of grace. Forcefully advancing no arsenal of hell no arrow of darkness no prophecy no divination no enchantment no witchcraft no ordinance in the heavenlies will prevail over me will prevail over my destiny hallelujah let me share with you a story many years ago one time i was praying in the night and when i was praying in the night i used to pray behind a wall and while i was praying that was my first encounter with a physical demon not a vision a demon like you are seeing somebody and all of a sudden i see this being stand and he said get back and i'm watching my god what is this will men believe if i tell them this then i just prayed in tongues and that's how it left you see i don't share these things because there are we live in a generation of people who not all men have faith when people hear these things they think you're just talking rubbish in one of the encounters i was praying praying in the spirit all of a sudden my roof just disappeared and then i see this being like a sea creature it had a tail looking like a dinosaur but the tail also had its own life that means the tail can disconnect and still be alive the eyes were as big as that of a human being and it was looking at me and it spoke and i had it it says so you think you want to bring god's people into abundance that spirit is what the bible calls mammon i saw it i know the spirit that keeps people poor i know the spirit that destroys people see there are dimensions in the spirit you cannot access if you don't pray i i didn't start having encounters with angels just because i was born again and a child of god there are frequencies in the spirit you rise to one day you will hit an escape velocity and you are in a dimension of dominion and power that the earth will respond to are we together do you believe what I'm telling you? Yes. They are about to drive people from your place of work. Instead of going around to talk to someone and he says, bring one million, bring two million, I will consider you. No, men ought always to pray. See, let me tell you this. If you believe in God and you believe in the power of prayer, engage it and watch what happens to you some of you are crying i'm looking at you because the holy spirit is telling you had you prayed
this thing that happened is not because God is not mighty it's because heaven kept asking who in this family can pray evil is about to come but heaven is ready heaven is ready who is there to pray they come in dreams they come through prophecies people send text messages but slumber keeps you the bible says a little it says, awake thou that sleepest and christ will give you light you must obtain grace to kill the spirit of slumber in your life the hand of god is coming upon this what this these people i'm seeing it in the spirit in the name of jesus i'm seeing a spirit i cast that spirit right now by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ you are not in ministry when you hold a mic you are in ministry when you are serious with god and serious with prayer i have told myself by the grace of god and with all humility that there is no mortal man who will meet me and remain the same it's a covenant with god it's a covenant that i have with god that if i pray for you and nothing changes i will go for a retreat i'm wasting my time it means i'm not doing ministry listen i'm not saying this to brag i want i want you to be angry this morning challenge yourself that when you come spirits know you are coming spirits know you are coming when you stand there there is an effulgence of grace from you you can fake power but you can't fake a relationship you can't fake a track record of a life of prayer and consistency that before evil arises prayer has gone forth before evil arises an arsenal in the spirit there is a bulwark of power protecting defending there are forces that want to make every destiny to not rise there are horns that if left will frustrate the counsel of god it will take the ministry of prayer say in the name of jesus i obtain grace to fan my prayer life back to flames say after me in the name of jesus i obtain grace to fan my prayer life back to flames spirit of laziness spirit of slumber i come against you it was while men slept that the enemy came and planted something please sit down this is a thanksgiving service a few minutes and we're done the next key that provokes divine intervention according to scripture that the saints can access to win battles even before they start is the power of praise praise is not just about singing and dancing alone it's a mysterious instrument for warfare and faith psalm 22 and verse 3 says but thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praise of Israel. That God makes the praise of men his habitation. Psalm 18 and verse 3. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. He says so by using this mystery of prayer and praise they are weapons shall i be saved keep that scripture please i will call upon the lord who is worthy to be praised say in doing so shall i be saved from my enemies that when they encompass me and they say where is his god i will engage the mystery of prayer and after prayer 
I will praise the God who is worthy to be praised. It says that when I do this, that so shall I be saved from my enemies. Judges chapter 1 and verse 2. Judges chapter 1 and verse 2. Let's hurry up. They were about to go for battle and they inquired of the Lord. What tribe should go first and lead in battle so that we can win? And the Lord said, Judah. Judah means praise. It says, Judah shall go up. Behold, in praise, I have delivered the land to his hands. There is, there is something mysterious about praise that is called perfected praise. Praise that comes from the, the depth of a man's heart. Like your pastor shared for the things that he has done, for the things that he is doing, and that which he will do. Praise is powerful. It was Kenneth Copeland that asked Bishop David Oyedepo. He said, you claim we are the ones who taught you faith, but how come God has given you increase like this? And Bishop Oedeko laughed. He said, I danced every one of these people to church. I danced every one of them in praise alone. Let me tell you this. This thing you call a dance is a mysterious spiritual weapon. Listen, please listen. Praising God with a dance is a mystery that only traditional people understand. That they invoke there is a reason why every tradition has preserved dancing through decades it is not just about shaking your body there is a deep mystery in a dance hallelujah yes that when the ark of the lord was taken back to jerusalem david escorted it in a dance and with praise and Saul's daughter saw him and said, you are too dignified. You are insulting the pedigree of your office. And he said, I am dancing before the Lord who took the kingdom from your father and gave it to me. And God had it and she died barren. Please listen to me. If you master the art of praise, thank God for the one you do corporately in church. But go back, lock yourself write all your prayer requests write all the mockery write all the shame are you together now and dance it before the god of heaven if you can't sing get Igbo high praise oh yes oh yes and you play it and dance before the lord like a madman it's none of your business whether you can dance or not it's not a competition this is warfare are we together that you rejoice and celebrate his majesty you will watch battles that you don't need to fight It's when the victory is won god will say you were supposed to fight this the mystery of intervention i have seen this mystery change impossible situations in the lives of people i will call upon the lord who is worthy of praise people who had no business having jobs People who did not apply and when the names came out their names were there with no application psalm 67 from verse 5 to 7 psalm 67 let the people praise thee O god let the people praise thee verse 6 it says then shall the earth that means the earth has been instructed to in to yield its increase only at the instance of praise now the earth is a universal point of contact everything makes contact with the earth your destiny helper makes contact with the earth the person who will give you breakthrough makes contact with the earth the person who will lift you makes contact with the earth so when the bible says the earth should yield her increase this earth you see is a universal point of contact everything that lives touches the earth the bible says as for the earth out of it comes bread 
you can dance your way with honor and while you are doing so god will wake someone and say remember i told you to keep two million naira that you will bless some people now this just bless this brother with it and let him pay his rent and the person does not know you you just get a text send me your account you think they are scammers until you see their lot and god says i'm not endorsing laziness but i am showing you that i am the god of all flesh and that in praise the bible says glorious in holiness fearful in praises there are dimensions of god you will only see in praises hallelujah so while you were dancing and you were celebrating it was not just a church celebration i tell you sincerely you are provoking something in the realm of the spirit fearful in praises go back home today don't just stop here go back home find a room find somewhere just place some worship and praise and dance before god and someone says ah did you get an alert he said no 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 no. something is happening in the realm of the spirit and while you are dancing you are celebrating five minutes will turn to 10 minutes 10 minutes to 15 minutes 15 minutes to 20 minutes 20 minutes to 30 minutes all of a sudden you start getting text messages someone you had been trying to pursue by yourself for five years suddenly says where are you i don't know why you are coming to my mind now you know the bible says for we know they don't know but we know are we together fearful in praises number three the third key that provokes divine intervention in the life of believers is the power of sacrifice write it down the power of sacrifice psalm 126 verse 1 to 6 sacrifice is a mystery in the kingdom that god never ignores that people can change the tides of things against them there have been times in the bible when it was obvious to certain kings that they were going to defeat them and take their nations the bible says they carried their own children and slew them and when they slew their children and indignation rose before god and the battles were overturned my bible says when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like them that dream verse 2 then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing then said they among the hidden the lord had done great things for them three the lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad verse 4 turn again our captivity o lord as the streams in the south they that sow in they that sow in there are certain seeds you don't laugh when you are sowing it when you are giving ishmael you laugh but when it is truly isaac you will know that this one please keep that scripture there they that sow in tears shall reap not with joy in joy and then the bible says verse six that please give us verse six he that goeth forth and weepeth why because he's bearing precious seeds he says without a doubt he will come again rejoicing bringing in the sheaves believers let me tell you this sadly every time preachers teach about sacrifice most times we think that it's just about money and giving money and emptying accounts and so on and so forth the real idea of sacrifice is using the principle of resurrection to change the circumstances in your life let me share with you a mystery god taught me and that would be the end for this session according to scripture the bible says this heaven and this earth shall pass away is that true that a new heaven and a new earth can come again now paul teaching on the seed taught a mystery and he said that this seed in the kingdom you don't only reap what you sow 
but there is something you can do to your seed that at resurrection it will carry another body that god is able to give your seed another body is that correct and according to scripture the bible says when a seed is sown it dies do we agree it dies and then it comes back to life that means any season i do not want to see in my life i can tie that season to a seed and if i plant that seed provided that seed dies that season must also die with it i show you how to end seasons in your life that i see a season and i'm tired of that season i can bring that season to end by using the principle of death and resurrection i tie that season of delay i tie that season of pain i tie that season of disappointment to a seed the moment that seed dies i start rejoicing it's impossible for that season to still be alive when your seed has died and then when resurrection starts it comes with another season another season in your life or a robots before he died one time he was diagnosed of an incurable disease and the doctor told him oral please prepare you may not be able to survive this you may not leave and he said why he said we're sorry we've done our best and he called his wife he said how much do we have in this account that account called his staff and he said go and empty it as a sacrifice the moment that sacrifice went mysteriously his system began to change you see i've taught this you see why it's dangerous to steal money in church because you don't know what season who is trying to kill if you stop that season from dying you will continue that season in your own life are you getting this now yes because seeds should die and if you come and carry 10 naira someone has tied his delay tied his barrenness tied his witchcraft on that seed and you carry it and put it in your pocket it's not money you put in your pocket you authorize those seasons and say i have the power to handle you come to me because it's only the one who changes seasons that should deal with those seeds show me any season that you do not like in your life i can show you how to change it that if god can grant you grace with understanding and you take a sacrifice i have turned seasons in my life overnight by the power of seeds hallelujah i remember many years ago i was in port Harcourt. i was tired of a season in my life and the lord gave me an instruction it was during a conference and he said to carry everything i had when i say everything i mean everything they didn't have much i put everything in a bag and dragged it like a coffin to the church unfortunately i went late and I sat at the overflow. And when people were dancing to come and give their seeds, people were giving land, people were giving a lot of things, the Holy Ghost decided to disgrace me. He said, you wait till everybody is done, then you will come. And I had to obey. True story. As soon as everyone was done giving, he said, now you can go. I held my bag. This was my, it was a real Isaac. I dragged everything to the altar. In the presence of everyone when i dropped everything something inside me fell with it i knew that this was isaac i went back to my seat and i sat down and the holy ghost spoke a few words to me i will never forget what happened to me the next day 6 10 in the morning someone calls me and says are you joshua selman I said yes he said send me your account number i said who are you he said that's not the issue just send me your account number and he sent something to me that except you are not godly you must praise god when you see that kind of thing and from that time god began to do things in my life seasons can change by the power of sacrifice are we together sacrifice sacrifice is not just giving 
checking your pocket and carrying money and dropping no sacrifice is an intentional it is not the money it is the understanding and the sacrifice that backs that money you can drop money and it was just donation sacrifice in first king 17 when you read from verse 6 i believe the story of elijah and the widow in zarephath the bible says that elijah came after the ravens brought bread and all of that when you go to verse 7 that he came to a woman in zarephath and he told her she was trying to pack her wood and he said madam bring me a cup of water respectfully she was bringing it to honor the man of god he said while you are coming please make me some bread i'm hungry and she said sir sincerely i'm about to eat the last one so that i and my son will die and he said surely that will not happen he said you just bring it and let me eat and when he brought it he prophesied to her she lived off that until the famine was over psalm 50 and verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice you can ask your pastor you can ask every man of god that i know there is nobody i know who is thriving in a position of honor and grace that sacrifice did not take them there once upon a time archbishop benson idahosa was entering a plane and there was an issue in the plane and there was need for a seat and you know nobody was willing to excuse and do all of this and a particular businessman got up to honor him and he said because you have honored me he prophesied to him the name of that businessman is aliko dangote there are stories behind the glories of men and today it can be an opportunity for you to seal this praise service with an understanding of sacrifice that you can change seasons and you can introduce newer seasons into your life with power with understanding i once had the story as i round up of a couple this is a true story this couple came to church and i think the church at that time was having a project and they wanted to zinc the church and they were also having their own they had their own house and then they were trying to build another i think or so for rentals and they decided as a couple they said we are going to do something that is really crazy they said we are going to carry this money and we're going to take it to the church and we'll sow it there and they took that seed crying and when they dropped that seed they returned back home and according to the man he said the lord told them that you will never have to build a house by yourself in your life again because of this that you have done the time that man was talking without exaggeration he had 21 properties none built by himself these are the kinds of teachings where it becomes difficult to not teach without a testimony but then it also becomes difficult to share your own testimony because at that point when, when you do it now it will be it will become like it is pride and then because we seek to project jesus and him alone i can share with you testimonies your pastors can share with you testimonies of what sacrifice can do so don't think this is some jamboree to just manipulate anybody who sincerely loves you and wants you to be exempted from evil from poverty from pain will tell you this today by the grace of god and with all humility I've had the opportunity to meet people who I do not know, who come together as a business and say, we came and agreed that we'll make you a non-executive board member in our company. Who are you? What do you do? They say, no, you, your own is just to bring the presence of God in our business. Don't, don't, please don't think men of God are daft. Well, you know, people have a way of believing that all we do is just preach we don't know anything at all about finance about life it's not so it's not so hallelujah 
that it is possible to step into prepared blessings there are times god will give you seeds to sow but there are times the urgency will require bread coming directly from heaven he can do both he can give you seed to sow and he can send manna from heaven for you some of us the urgency in our lives right now does not require seeds to sow you need bread coming from heaven to cater for your needs hallelujah the power of consistent prayer the power of a grateful heart expressed in praise praise with a dance praise with a dance with understanding and then the power of sacrifice that you lay something down that shakes the gate of hell and you say lord by this seed i am prepared to change seasons by this seed i am prepared to move to higher dimensions of the anointing years ago i took a seat to go and honor a man of god and when i went to honor that man of god he looked at me and he said kneel down and he says father put him in a position where only him can solve that problem i thought it was a selfish prayer i said oh, no 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 I'm, I'm all for the body of christ i like everybody rising together and i could sense him feeling that is your business i'm praying a prayer for you now i understand what he was saying that wherefore god had uh what was what, what's, what's the highly exalted him and giving him a name that is above it's not a name that is below a name that is above your name can be below but there is a name that is above that when the name is mentioned there is a reaction in this kingdom hallelujah my life is a testament of sacrifices i tell you sincerely under god i believe it is so with your pastor the only person left is you life will remain at a natural phase for you till you accelerate your rising through the power of intentional sacrifice you may not have money to give one day wake up in the morning and plead with your pastor and say sir i don't have money to give but i am here today to iron your clothes i will iron your clothes and wash your car with understanding that is sacrifice as you are washing that car father in the name of jesus i'm tired of trekking i'm tired of walking around like a fool i'm tired of stagnation when they kick a car it moves obediently my destiny should also move and while you are washing that car and you are washing those clothes and the lord says so this is what you are doing to honor me since you cannot see me you are honoring my servant step into the next level This I'm telling you is a very powerful mystery. Very powerful mystery. Recently, a, a great man of God, a, a great friend of mine, he went to go and sow a seed into the life of God's servant, um, Baba Deboe. And when he went there, he told him, he said, lie flat on the ground on my carpet. And when he lay flat on the ground, he began to speak to him from the bowels of his spirit. When I saw it, I said, this man, see, there is a way that people speak. You know, they are just blessing you so you will go. But there is a way they are standing in their office with the throne that backs them activated and they utter words from their spirit. It will rattle systems and structures till it shifts your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? I never start my year. There are specific sacrifices to specific people let me tell you the truth you see we say these things because we want you to understand that it's not just you know we have a way of thinking people are just lucky god is just helping them it's not true many of you by the grace of god have had a choice servant of god seated in your midst week after week month after month but you have not had the discernment to say who is this man and what great when i saw your property the extension there i was talking to your pastor i said i thought this was the end of it when i saw it i said my god this has to be grace here and yet for for a long time you are looking for a property that you can have the discernment to carry a sacrifice and come and kneel before pastor and his wife to say sir i discern that you are a career of grace that brings dominion at a territorial level 
i pray in the name of jesus that you will activate something in my life it does not matter whether it's done in secret or it's done in the open <sighs> doors just open like that are we together yes this is the mystery by which men ordinary men rise to supernatural dimensions of grace with the mighty hand and the power of god sacrifice is powerful i live in it it's not something that maybe you do once in a while please hear me if you want to change seasons and you want to take shame out of your life let sacrifice be like a shadow to you those who are not of this kingdom will call it foolishness they will even call it manipulation of members and as I've always observed, I know that there are places and there are people where there are all kinds of things. By the grace of God, your church and this place and this conference is a place of truth and integrity. And I tell you sincerely, you can turn seasons around. I had the privilege of talking with one of the group general managers of a bank in this nation. And I prophesied to him that I saw trouble coming to your bank, mister. And here is my advice for you get a sacrifice and take it to a man of god as god will reveal to you and watch what happens and with childlike foolishness he carried that sacrifice and the last time we spoke it was a wonder what god had done in his bank this is not something that is just spiritual it has monetary implication it has destiny implication hallelujah power of sacrifice mama i don't know what grace was on you you didn't go to school but you raised 11 children by frying akara it's not about akara there was a grace i carried this sacrifice with my big manism and my masters and doctors let something come upon my life whatever made you to feed 11 children and none of us you were giving people rice who went to school when you see supernatural results and consistent results it's no more scientific listen it is what is on you that controls what is around you everything around you is a report card it's an attestation it's showing us what is on you thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over I came from a region that did not have so many successful people. I saw people become mediocre. I hardly saw ministries rise from that point to a global scale. And I said, no, this I have to exempt my... See, there is, there is a holy anger. There is an anger that comes upon you. That you say in the name of Jesus, seed, go for me. I, I send you like a weapon. Enter my tomorrow. Scatter what is not of God. Scatter altars. And ensure that I do not see shame. hallelujah it's true it's true i went for a conference a pfn conference in adamawa some years ago and the man who drove me was a doctor he's a lecturer in the university there but he had been barring for a long time and he said please allow me drive apostle this was a distinguished person in the academia and while he, he never spoke to me about it and on the final day I now looked at him and said, why am I hearing the cry of a baby? And he said, thank God. I said, I'm hearing the cry of a baby because the Lord is telling me that you have been barren. Your wife has been barren. He started crying. Today, as I speak to you, I don't even know how many children he has. <laughs> Exempted from shame through the power of sacrifice. Exempted from shame through the power of sacrifice. Husband, no job wife no job children no job no way you carry a seed and you take it before the lord and say if god be god let fire fall from heaven and take away this shame let me tell you many people are not yet tired of shame that's why sacrifice looks too heavy when you see the implication of shame in your life and your destiny and reproach
we are going to pray this is a thanksgiving service but god wants to perfect this in our lives and it will happen through the power of sacrifice i tell you sincerely there are many of you here as i'm talking to you the spirit of god is speaking to you and saying this is the step that you need to push i'm not talking of giving for god's sake like you just carry money and come and drop emotionally no this is a calculated intentional is 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 coming from the bowels of pain i'm tired of a season in my life oh god i am tired of always begging and looking for things i am tired of always being stranded somewhere on the way and you provoke seasons and you watch the hand of the mighty one move and shift things in your life i'm going to pray for you tonight but as we round up this conference i have not made this discussion with your pastor and respectfully speaking i don't know what god is going to tell you now i know that this is not something that I'm speaking by the Spirit and I apologize. I hope I do not break any protocol. Listen to me. I want you by the Spirit of God to stand with God in prayer and say, Lord, speak to me. What seed as a sacrifice will I bring not to the church, not to the church, to this vessel of yours and his wife? There is a grace. There are the spiritual coverings over this place. I sense in my spirit that God wants to shift people into seasons. I know you can come and drop offering for church. I'm talking of the grace, tapping into the grace of God upon this man. That there are sacrifices that God is going to speak to you in this season. He will speak to you as a family. He will speak to you as a company. See, except God is not God, that you heed to this that I'm saying, you will testify in tears on this stage at the way god will shift you through seasons it is true hallelujah this is what i do this is what i live by it's not theory it's true that you can wave certain seasons goodbye and they will wave you back authorized to leave you certain dimensions of shame leave your life forever till jesus comes Please rise up on your feet. We have just two, three minutes. In one minute, I'd like you to talk to the Lord. Father, I have given you thanks for all that you have done in my life. But I'm ready to shift seasons. Don't just pray for things. Pray for seasons. I sense in my spirit that we are in an encounter this morning to shift seasons. Not just to bring more things. Not just to bring new things. But to shift entire seasons in our lives. From seasons of spiritual bankruptcy to seasons of spiritual buoyancy. Seasons of lack and wants to seasons of blessings and abundance. Seasons of mediocrity and obscurity to seasons of notoriety and honor. Are you praying? Please lift your voice and pray. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Kate Kapos. Kate Branda Kata Pakotosko Pobreka Tekanekata.